Hey, who's ready to find out what chapter three is about in our book, No Talking by Andrew Clements? Let's see what's going to happen in chapter three. Chapter three is insults. If you had to shut up for five minutes, I bet the whole top of your head would explode. As those words flew out of his mouth, Dave had two thoughts. First, he thought, man, because he remembered he'd been trying not to talk at all. And his second thought was, Gandhi probably wouldn't have said that because it wasn't a very nice thing to say. But that's what Dave said. And he said it to Lindsay Burgess. And there was a reason he said it. So it's time to back up a little and explain. Dave had gotten through the lunch line without a peep. He had pointed at the pizza plate, then pointed at the fruit cup. He had nodded his head for yes, please, and shook his head for no thanks. He had grabbed some milk from the cooler and flashed his lunch pass at Mrs. Vitelli. And he had smiled a lot. No talking? <laughs> no problem. Then he'd sat down at the table with some of his friends, just like always. But instead of jumping into the conversation, Dave had kept a pleasant look on his face and he'd kept his mouth full of food. No talking? No problem. And because he wasn't talking, Dave had focused all his energy on listening. And because he wasn't talking, oh, sorry. <laughs> Wow, and because Miss Moreau's not paying attention, she's going to read the sentence twice. David focused all his energy on listening. <sighs> listening at the lunch table, really listening, was a brand new experience for him because most of the time, Dave was a loudmouth. See, there's something more about Dave, and it makes Dave's reaction to Gandhi make more sense. Because if Dave himself was a loudmouth, a real tongue flapper, then someone like Gandhi, who could keep completely quiet would seem that much more amazing because Dave really did love to talk. He could talk and talk and talk about almost anything. Baseball, cars, dinosaurs, rock hunting, soccer, snowboarding, water skiing, favorite books, best football players, camping, canoeing, PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, comic books, TV shows, movies, you name it. Dave had a long, long list of interests and he had plenty of opinions. Plus, Talking always made Dave feel like he was in charge. It was sort of like being a police officer out in the middle of traffic. As long as he did the talking, the traffic went the way he wanted it to. This was especially useful if insults started flying around. When it came to dishing out the put-downs, Dave was a pro. But this lunchtime, all the other loudmouths were getting a chance to spout off. So Dave had chewed his pizza and sipped his milk and listened. And after a minute or two, he began listening to Lindsay Burgess, but only because he couldn't help it. Even though he, she was sitting behind him at the lunch at, start again, even though she was sitting behind him at the next table, and even though the cafeteria was almost bursting with noise, Lindsay had a sharp voice, the kind that cuts like a hacksaw. So I said, are you serious? And she said, what's wrong with you? And I said, because I saw it first and I did. And it was a great color for me because my hair's brown and hers that her hair's that mousy blonde color. But her mom was right there in the store. So she picked it up and took it over to her and her mom bought it. Can you believe that? She knew I wanted that sweater more than anything. And she bought it anyway. And then after school on Friday at soccer practice, she smiled at me like she wanted to be friends or something. As if, can you believe that? No, Dave couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe that anyone could flap and yap her mouth so fast and say so many words and be so boring and stupid sounding all at the same time. He took another bite of pizza and tried to stop listening. But Lindsay was just getting warmed up. Because then she comes over after practice and she says, here, this is for you. And she tries to give me the sweater. So I pull my hands away like she's holding a dead skunk or something. And I say, you think I want that? That thing is so ugly. I would never wear that. And she says, oh, just like that. Oh, and she walks away with the sweater. Except now I wish I hadn't said that because it really is the best color. And it's really soft. By this point, Dave was wishing he had an iPod. Because if he had one, and if it hadn't been against school rules... He could have plugged up both his ears and cranked the volume, anything to get away from the sound of Lindsay's voice. Because once I tried wearing this sweater that was made of wool, and it made my neck itch so much, like, so I couldn't even wear it for two minutes. But it was okay, because then my mom found this turtleneck way down in the bottom of my dresser, and I'd forgotten, 
and I'd forgotten I even had it and it was pink. So then I put that on first and then the sweater was fine because really it was like the two colors went together perfectly, almost like a picture in a magazine because like last week in Teen People, Jenna and Lori and Keith were at this party like in Hollywood or somewhere and Jenna had on a sweater that was almost like that wool one I have and she was wearing these and that was the moment when Dave completely forgot about keeping silent. And he turned around and almost shouted, if you had to shut up for five minutes, I bet the whole top of your head would explode. And Dave was glad he'd said it, even if it wasn't nice. And even though it, it ended his experiment, because after he had said it, Lindsay stopped talking. But the quiet only lasted about three seconds. Lindsay said, is your cough all better? Because I thought I just heard a whiny little voice. She and her friends stared at Dave. Did you say something? Yeah, I did, said Dave. I said, I bet if you had to shut up for five minutes, the top of your head would explode like a volcano from all the hot gas that usually comes out of your mouth. When you talk and talk and talk and never stop talking. Yeah, that's what I said to you. Lindsay tilted her head and looked at Dave, sort of the way a bird looks at a bug it's about to eat. Oh, like there's something wrong with talking? You never have any trouble with yourself blabbing and blabbing every day. We've all heard you. And the other girls nodded and made faces. Well, said Dave, talking's okay when there's stuff worth saying. Lindsay said, oh, so boys can say things like, hey, did you hear this guy got traded to that team and that guy got traded to this team? And hey, he can hit real good last year. And oh, yeah, he can really catch. Boys can talk and talk like that, but girls can't talk about clothes sometimes. Is that it? Dave said, no, but I don't talk the way you talk, like for a million minutes in a row without stopping. And, and... Dave was hunting for something strong to say, a real punchline, something that would shut Lindsay up and end this conversation. So he said, and anyway, boys never talk as much as girls do ever. Please take a careful look at that last thing Dave just said. Because with this particular group of fifth graders, that was a dangerous thing to say. And now is a good time to tell a little more about the fifth grade boys and the fifth grade girls at Lakedon Elementary School to explain why it was a bad idea for Dave to say what he had just said. Because Dave should have kept his mouth shut. He really should have. Chapter four, cooties. When little Dave Packer and all the other kids his age first showed up to begin kindergarten together, it was sort of like they were new recruits joining the army. And kindergarten was sort of like basic training camp, except the teachers were a lot nicer than army drill instructors. After nine long months together in kindergarten, Dave and the other new recruits were allowed to quit the army, but only for the summer, because in September, they all had to re-enlist for first grade. And after first grade, they marched through second grade together, then third, and so on, right through the grades, together. A few kids moved away and a couple of new kids arrived, but Dave and those original kindergarten recruits stayed together year after year, and they began to grow up together. At most elementary schools, by the time a group of gets to fifth grade, the boys have stopped thinking that all the girls have cooties, and the girls have stopped thinking that all the boys have cooties, and that's the way it should be, to outgrow that stuff. For some groups, it's easy. The kids grow up a little bit and then and they all learn that everyone's a real person. And some of those persons are boys and some are girls and suddenly everyone gets along just fine, person to person. No more cooties. However, some groups of kids cling to those cooties a little too long. The boys avoid the girls and the girls avoid the boys and everyone keeps seeing cooties everywhere. And sadly, that's the way it was with most of the fifth grade kids at Lakedon Elementary School. Of course, the fifth graders didn't actually use the word cooties anymore. That would have sounded like baby talk. They used words like dumb or gross or immature or annoying. But a cootie by any other name is still a cootie. And even worse, Dave and Lindsay were the king and queen of the fifth grade cootie clingers. Dave had zero tolerance for girls and Lindsay had less than zero tolerance for boys. And that's why Dave should have kept his mouth shut. Now it's time to get back to the action in the lunchroom because when Lindsay heard Dave say boys never talk as much as girls do, 
She felt like all girls everywhere had been insulted, slapped in the face by a dumb, gross, immature, annoying boy. And she hadn't forgotten what Dave had already said about the top of her head blowing off because of hot gas. Lindsay wasn't the kind of person who forgives and forgets insults. She was the kind of person who remembers and then gets even. We're going to have to stop there. Chapter five is called The Contest. We'll see what happens tomorrow with The Contest. All right, stay tuned. See you soon.